All right. All right. Now we could. Okay, it's cool. Yeah, so uh, Quiet Friday. I hope everyone's had a fantastic weekend. Uh, welcome to the tail end of it. What a splendid way to go and spend your time um, with a little bit of uh, narrative action, both just IRL and game-wise, um, chatting-wise and game-wise. So Friday was a pretty chill day. Just um, what did I even get up? Just have to lift up my flags and check. So I keep my flags hidden on here. Yeah, it's just mainly, mainly doing tech stuff. I did drag it out, but I'm, I, I did drag out. I didn't get nearly as much done as I wanted on Friday as I intended versus a very productive Wednesday and Thursday. But um, I'm all caught up on YouTube again. Uh, all the right details are in the right places, so I went a little bit a little bit spam happy in, in the clips and archive screens with all the VODs that should have been put in place and uh, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, if you're in clips and archive screens and you didn't catch all the shows and there's certain ones you wanted to, they're all right there and all the timestamps are in place on the YouTube channel so that's all super good uh, well and there's the social links as well there is the Twitter there is the YouTube and there is the Instagram then um, yes yeah, Saturday um, I was pretty much straight out after I woke up I just got like prepped and was doing things um, during the day and in the afternoon a few odds and sods and then went up to London I uh, had a really nice night out I haven't had um, like a f proper night out in London for a while. It's always few and far between. I always wish I could get more. Well, actually, like, tell a lie, tell a lie. Um, it's uh, I had one for Twitch London, obviously. That was uh, that was a really good night out. That was um, that was a couple of good nights out actually. That was really really good fun. But what I mean is um, just going out and going out for uh, an evening with a bunch of friends and um, uh, and that kind of thing, rather than uh, a dedicated evening for uh, you know streaming or uh, networking or anything like that. No, no, no theme thing of stuff that I, try, I do with my time. More just meeting up and going out to the pub and going out dancing and stuff. So yeah, Saturday night I went to... Um I went to uh, a Brazilian themed evening. I have some Brazilian friends and uh, they keep uh, on top of the idea of um, Brazilian parties and stuff like that, like kind of events that get organised and they're always great fun with loads of good dancing and all that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, that was going on. That was on form and um, had a very, very good night. Rocked up for a barbecue. Uh, I, I missed a part of the barbecue. I got there a bit late but got to my friend's place. Ate my fill and then some of uh, lots of delicious meat and stuff and sandwiches and then we started on the pre-drinking you know as you do it's like right we're going out in London right well, we'll get as much in as before we have to start paying London prices as humanly possible and uh, that went fine we all we all went out um, to Oxford Circus pretty well oiled um, lubricated shall we say socially lubricated and uh, yeah got to the, uh, the Jerusalem bar in Oxford Circus and um, yeah it was fun it's always a good night it's always uh, a good laugh uh, plenty just dancing a lot and just uh, having a good thing. It was so hot though. It was so brutally, brutally hot. Uh, I think that I don't know if the aircon was busted in the place and it was like one of the most humid days again. I was just looking outside to like get a measure of the weather, but it's actually been a lot fresher and nicer today. We had some rainfall and the clouds cleared, so it's not so sticky. But it was sticky as balls, so that was night of a bit of a nightmare. Um stayed over at my friend's place and uh, yeah just couldn't sleep because it was too hot so I got I got back to, to, to the Shire to Oxfordshire about midday and I've been pottering around trying to get various things done it's like I need to have a nap I need to have a nap I need to I, I just like just wind down and, and try and get some energy back in the tiniest modicum of sleep before I start the show uh, I managed to actually get in maybe about an hour hour and a half um, timed it wrong because I was actually dozing off at my chair at about two and then I decided to eventually go and get a nap at half four. Um, got about 90 minutes, so I've been fresher. Not gonna lie, I have been fresher um, with things going on, but nevertheless, the show must go on. It will do good. I'm full of beans, and as always, hyped to be doing the good stuff for you wonderful folks. Um, da -da 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 -da. Just make sure everything's running, f running all good and live and fine. Well, <clears throat> um, hmm, interesting. <laughs> Just looked at a couple of uh, stats. So I'm just going to hit a little refresh here, and then we're going to get started with some stories and uh, cool bits and bobs. Okie dokie. Right now, that's all. That's all behaving. Everything is good. Apologies in the background. Sort of technical malarkey that's not quite doing its thing. So. Um 
And let me know if the uh, the volume of the background music is okay. I've I pulled it down. It, it changes every level from every tune, so that's that's all that. All right. <clears throat> have a whole bunch of cool stories here. We've got some... Let me get to the stream info terminals. Uh, not stream, sorry. Su suggestion forum of the streaming complex. We've got uh, submission. We've got poems. Um, a couple of cool things from Reddit regarding uh, um, everything from nature to the usual today I fucked up. And then a few more from Darken. So we've got submissions from Mr. Duncan Florence, Mr. Effects, and Mr. Darken's 10,000. So without further ado, let's do a little bit of the live story read. Reading, shall we? Uh, how about... So this first one is, today I fucked up. Um, I'll, I'll let me give you the preface if you're not somebody who reads read, and I don't except for these little Sunday stories that I do enjoy getting getting sent to me. This is just a short one. So Tfue is today I fucked up. It's a community for the dumbass in all of us. We all have those moments where we do something ridiculously stupid. Let us make each other feel better about ourselves. Come and check it out uh, uh, check, uh, and uh, make, be, be better about ourselves. So this one is uh, three days ago. It's posted by user, let me read this right. Colita Coley Cole, um, 16.7 thousand upvotes, and today I fucked up by letting my daughter keep pet snails. So, my sweet daughter loves bringing new pets into our house. Right now she is really into snails, so I made a little snail habitat that she could keep her newfound friends in. Well, the other day she brought home some snails in a red solo cup and we forgot to put them in the snail habitat right away. Oh dear. The next morning I realised my mistake, put the snails from the cup into the little snail habitat and think nothing more of it. Yesterday I made some coffee. French press of coffee and I go about my day. Now here was where I realised I fucked up. This morning I was doing the dishes. I go to wash my teapot dump the old water out and guess what comes out with the water the motherfucking boiled snail oh Ew. the little bugger climbed into my teapot through the spout thinking it would be a good place to chill no nope. he got boiled and i made my coffee with snail infused water drank the whole damn thing as two moral of the story Count the snails. Count the damn snails. Oh, good lord. <laughs> that is... That is gross. That is absolutely horrible. That is a... That is a proper, pure, bona fide fuck up right there. Outstanding start. Outstanding start. Uh, thank you so much, Duncan and Florence, for that one. Right, uh, moving swiftly on. That's a nice little uh, short one. Next, we've got um, one in from R Nature, Reddit Nature, which uh, is a, a new Reddit thread to me, um, courtesy of Mr. Duncan Florence again. So this is share your fascinating links about nature and discuss endangered parts of nature and contribute about the wonders of nature and so on. That's the whole premise um, of the Reddit thread, which you might well imagine from the name. So this one is posted by Maxwell Hill user Maxwell Hill a couple of days ago and turtles born a turtles born key breeding ground will all be turned female by climate change study predicts all right this is um, a link to the independent which is a, a, a UK independent newspaper as the name might suggest as opposed to one of the ones owned by uh, conglomerates um, or like venture capitalists etc etc uh, oh Right, two seconds, I've got my ad blocker running on there, so I'm just going to turn it off temporarily. It's actually, independent journalism is worth supporting with a little bit of financial aid. Right, there we go. I can read it again. So, night. Oh, jeez. Okay, this one's not so upbeat. This one's not so upbeat. I thought it was going to be a nice, cute story about uh, turtles. Two seconds. It's, um... It's chugging along and reloading because of the, the ad, so let me just hit refresh there. I think I've got a bit too much stuff running in the background. Alright, while that's trying to fix itself... Uh, 
Ah, uh, that's good. Okay, it's just my RAM was really struggling with the amount that's going on. No, that's still coming up. Oh, that's annoying. There was so much... Okay, it's probably all the ads trying to do stuff. I'm going to jump over to malicious compliance. We'll come back to the turtles bit uh, in, a, in a second. So this is from the, the R forward slash malicious compliant, which is people... Am I mayor yet? No, nubs. Nubs, you keep trying to perform this coup. You keep trying to perform this coup, and it's not happening. Taxes and laws don't apply to you for at least another... You still got 24 hours to get away with whatever the hell you like, because at midnight on Monday evening, citizen nubs, tax and laws apply to you again. But... <laughs> In the meantime, go, 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 go insane. Go do a purge in, 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 in like the downtown quarters. And good evening, citizen nubs. How you doing, my dude? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, is that bloody log? I want to read this loggerhead turtles thing. Why is it struggling so much? Uh, all right, it's deciding not to, for some reason, it decided to shit the beds. That was why it was struggling. Okay, now it's... Now it's actually loading swiftly again. Right, I'll, I'll come back to malicious compliance. We'll read the loggerhead turtles thing. Loggerhead turtles born at a key breeding ground in Cape Verde will all be turned female because of climate change, a new study has warned. Even under a low emission scenario, 99.86% of the hatchlings would be female by 2100, researchers at the University of Exeter said. Now, why is this? If emissions continue unabated, then more than 90% could be incubated at lethally high temperatures, killing youngsters before they hatch. How does that make them ladies? Cape Verde has one of the largest nesting populations of loggerhead turtles in the world, with around 15% of the global nesting total. Wow. The sex of turtles is determined by the temperatures at which they are incubated, and warm temperatures favour females. Aha! Scientists at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, temperature projections for 2100, a uh, low projection, which is always certainly way too optimistic, is 1.8 degrees Celsius, or I don't know, like 8 billion Fahrenheit if you're American. Um, middle, the mid range is 2.8 Celsius, and the high is 3.4, which is terrifying. Um, currently, 84% of hatchlings at Cape Verde are female, according to their paper published in the journal Marine Ecology Progress Series. Warmer temperatures are set to dramatically increase this, and of course that's going to be a problem because then there isn't going to be enough boys to sustain the population unless evolution kicks in and allows boys to be born at hotter temperatures. Under all three climate change scenarios in our study, by 2100 more than 99% of all hatchlings would be female. Under mid and high emission scenarios there could be no males at all, said Dr Lucy Hawkes from the University of Exeter. Lead paper author Claire Tanner, who worked on the study as part of a master's at the institution, added, what surprised us was how even the low emission scenarios has detrimental effects for this population. What this shows is that, the, is that now is the time to act on climate change before it is too late to prevent the estimation seen in this paper. Couldn't agree more. Projections are based on the current nesting behaviour, and researchers say loggerheads could adapt by nesting earlier in the year when it's cooler. In theory, natural selection will favour the turtles to do this, but the speed of climate change is likely to mean they cannot evolve fast enough, because evolution takes time. Um, complex evolution uh, takes generations and generations and generations. Scientists said the turtles might benefit from specific features such as shade under trees, which could provide slightly cooler conditions. The reproductive lifespan of males is not known, so older males might continue breeding after new males, years after new males stop being hatched, although at some point the population is very likely to crash, which is quite sad. Last year, research led by the World Wildlife, the Wa World Wide Fund for Nature, WWF, Australia found that more than 99% of green turtles being born in parts of the Great Barrier Reef were female. They also warned that turtle populations faced complete feminization in the near future. In some northern beaches near Australia's Great Barrier Reef, scientists found that virtually every juvenile turtle was female and, o and over 85% of the adults. Right, well that... That is discouraging, but food for thought, food for thoughts. 
um, we, we, we must act. We must act on the threat of climate change. Well, on the topic of science, as the nature, that segues into a little thing I looked up. I decided to put a little bit of my own submissions in with this because you delightful townspeople um, have been throwing in your things like you do in the suggestions forum in time for every Sunday for the first part of the stream for the live reading. And I've got uh, from futurism.com this week in science. Oh, I just literally looked, I just literally looked, and uh, This Week in Science is not showing me This Week in Science at all, it's showing it from sometime in 2018. Um, let's see the latest. Is there anything I can quickly grab there? Hmm. Ah, oh, go on then, let's do some science this way. And Nubs, how are you doing, dude? I caught you a little bit earlier having a chat on the delightful, delectable Indeedy Stardew Valley in the background, making all kinds of witty banter. I do hope you are good. So just a, a little thing, this is um, July the 10th, uh, so about four days ago, a little bit of science news for you. Uh, two black holes, two supermassive black holes are on a devastating crash course. It's a major embarrassment for astronomy that we don't know if super black, supermassive black holes merge. So by supermassive black holes, that means the kind of black holes that uh, galaxies rotate around. So at the centre of the Milky Way, there are super, there's a supermassive black hole that's what the entire thing uh, rotates around and orbits around at a tremendous rate of speed, but you wouldn't think it just chilling here in the summer. So, collision course. Two supermassive black holes, each 800 million times more massive than our sun, are on a cosmic collision course with each other. It's the numbers in astronomy that I find amazing or simultaneously incomprehensible. Like, the sun is 90, it's either 98 or 99.8 percent of all the mass in the solar system because the planets collectively, even the gas giants, you know, Jupiter and, and, and Saturn and so on, um, in terms of sheer volume, occupy so little of it. And then you take something like that, the sun, and like 800 million, I couldn't even get my minds around, and that's each one of these things that's about to go smush together. Thankfully, th very thankfully, the two black holes are both about two and a half billion light years away from us here on Earth, and a light year is a long way. According to research published in the journal, the Astrophysical Journal Letters on Wednesday, so it would take two and a half billion years for astronomers to detect the cosmic waves given off by the collision. Um, right, well, set your watches, folks, two and a half billion years from now. <laughs> but in the meantime, their very existence could help astronomers better understand black holes throughout the universe, or to be specific, because of the way the speed of light and time works in the theory of relativity. Uh, obviously, this this event happened two and a half billion years ago, like half half the age of the planet. Um, it was well before the rise of any and all life on Earth by a huge margin. These two things went smush and we're only just seeing it now. When black holes reach, when the black holes reach the final days of their fated approach, they'll give off gravitational waves a million times stronger than those that were first discovered at LIGO, uh, Flatteron Institute for Computational Astrophysicist Scientist Chiara Mingarelli explained at a Princeton University press, re uh, press release. Uh, yeah, the LIGO the gravitational waves detection, I think, was last year or 2017. It was a huge breakthrough. It's equivalent of like having a whole extra sense for detecting the universe. Imagine you were looking at the universe only with your eyes, and suddenly you could have a sense of smell. That was the scale of being able to discover and detect gravitational waves. So supermassive black hole binaries, also a great Muse song, supermassive black hole. Supermassive black hole binaries produce the loudest gravitational waves in the universe, she says. Based on the location of other known supermassive black holes, the scientists expect to pick up the waves given off by other collisions within the next five years, per the press release. If they don't, it will lend evidence to the so-called so final parsec problem, which suggests that supermassive black holes never actually collide. Instead, it holds that they just enter an endless spiral as soon as they reach a one parsec um, or about 3.2 light year distance from each other. 3.2 light years is a colossal amount of space. For example, our, our nearest 
a, a astronomical neighbour, Alpha Centauri, or no, Alpha Proxima. The, the nearest star to our solar system is only one light year away. So it's like th three times the length of that just for these two bodies to be so close they can't get any so any closer because they're so colossal. Hey, Resident Silver Magpie's in the house. Hello, hello, hello. Lovely to see you, mate. Uh, doing a little bit of part one, live reading, all kinds of interesting things from the internet and submissions from the community, and then it's Pillars of Eternity 2 for part two, and the live reading of the Luscious Levitious Law. L-O-R-E, of course, not L-A-W. Unless there happens to be some legalese in Pillars of Eternity 2, and Silver Magpie, how are you doing? It's a major embarrassment for astronomy that we don't know supermassive black holes merge, Princeton astrophysicist Jenny Green says, uh, said at the press release. For everyone in black hole physics, observationally, this is a long-standing puzzle that we need to solve. Models predict that the final parsec problem is insurmountable unless three or more supermassive black holes all merge together. That's insane. If that's true, then the astronomers won't detect any of those thunderous gravitational waves. Huh, interesting. But if the astronomers do pick up on new waves in the next few years, it will mean supermassive black holes actually can collide with one another, emerge into even bigger stellar monstrosities, a discovery that would doom the two faraway black holes to their distant collision. I would say they... A uh, hunch that they would actually merge. That they would actually merge oh, to a thing. Decision. The Beast 081704. Thank you so much for the follow. Residency to Cravenstown is granted. Lodgings are being prepared. Please ignore the screams and a legit welcome to you. I appreciate you supporting the channel. I am pretty good, Silver Magpie. I am well. I've had a very nice weekend. I'm on the last faint, wispy vestigial traces of our hangovers are escaping behind my eyes. And um, yeah, quite contented with one and all things. So. Moving swiftly on, back to a little bit of Reddit after some highbrow, highbrow, uh, uh, sciencey, sciencey stuff. Let's have a look. Oh, hang on. Sorry, me older. I'm sorry. By the way, if you're sorry, if there's any um, frames uh, getting a little dropping, in order to make things switch from part one to part two quickly, those of you who don't already know, I um, I have Pillars of Eternity two running in the background, and um, that that is uh, making things slow up because it has such a long loading time. I try and get it ready just so. Hey, a legit hello, Citizen Naomi Sully. How you doing? Get the munchkins sat down with some snacks and some toast because your favorite British buddy is laying on the awesome story time and Tig the uh, TGG or I'll just say Tig, Tig's nice, Tig's a good name for a goat, Tig the gaming goat, Nick <laughs> almost got me, almost got me Tig the gaming goat, well played, welcome on in, hi how you doing, welcome to Story Sunday and Naomi I hope you've had a fantastic weekend, how have you been, how have you been, how have you been, how have you been, um so this is now back to Reddit. This is from Malicious Compliance. Um, so if you don't know this Reddit sub uh, subreddit, it is people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. So um, this is posted by Miss uh, Akedia seven seventeen hours ago. It has already got like eight point two thousand upvotes. So this is add up what everything everyone owes me. Sure thing, boss. All right, so this, and this is, uh, we're going to read from the point of view of the user from now on. This happened a few years back, but I remember, I remembered it at work today. I work at a spa and salon at the front desk. The employees get a pretty good discount on services, so plenty of them, get, plenty of them get their nails, lashes, hair, etc., done regularly at this spa. The rule is pay when you are done, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no worries, oh, no wise. worries. It was, it was, it was a pretty harmless one. If you, you didn't exactly come in with like something immensely toxic, and I was like, ah, oh, ho, 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 ho. almost got me. Welcome, welcome. Well, duh, Jesus Christ! All right, ten to one. Lead that was purple, darkened. seventy-five bonus seven. How? Pride lion hay. Pride Lion Hay indeed. Oh, you changed it up from a ahoy to a how, Darkens. Thank you so much for the 75 biddies. And yes, Bleed Purple is 
back. If you're dropping the biddies, use the bleed purple emote and a few extras go to your favorite streamers for no cost to yourself. And welcome as well to Tig the Gaming Goat. I love that username, I really do. Let's get some welcome banners in for Tig, who was a very good sport, who was a very good sport about me not quite doing the silly streamer reading out the names thing. <laughs> oh, it was a typo, it was a typo. Sorry, Dark and Citizen, Dark and Citizen Naomi. And now the recent resident Tig the Gaming Goat and resident the beast the beast i bet the beast is swole he's hench as fuck uh, or she is hench as fuck um welcome in one and all welcome to story sunday so um <laughs> Let me, let me just catch where I was in the story. So yeah, if you don't know the stream, by the way, the first part of it, I do some live reading. I just do some story readings. I've had enough people say that they quite like the idea. Oh, my word! Pause everything! It's firing all of us! Oh, now I'm seeing a little bit of the frame rate drip drops in the gifts. Best place to put my prime is right here. D. Oh, Silver Magpie! Thank you. That is so lovely. I, I I couldn't couldn't possibly disagree with that with that decision. Silver Magpie, welcome back to the ranks of the citizenry. You are not just legit. You are Craven's Town legit. There we are, folks. Our citizens are already hitting that legit, hitting that legit. And let me do exactly the same one. Definitely not my monitor. Definitely not my monitor. Freaking um, second. It's definitely not my phone. Second monitor. Firstly, enjoy the use of your legit emotes. There's more of them coming, but the welcome banner is there as well now. Especially legit itself. Oh, and there's Citizen Neil and Nielsen Alex coming in with some quick legitness as well. We'll get you a shout in a little bit, good buddy. Um, welcome back. Enjoy your legit emotes all over Twitch. And of course, especially the legit, the most common bit game slang on the internet. The only place you'll actually find an emote that says it when, however, you want to emphasize legit with it. You know by now how emotes, whenever someone says the word, you now have your three month flag, your bronze flag. See this? Nah, big on, big on, blue one. Silver Magpie has gotten something shinier to decorate her nest with. Wave it loud and proud every time you chat here. And the longer you're with us, the more it will level up. Of course, you'll be able to enter the August giveaway. The next Citizens giveaway will be the first um, stream in August. You will have your access back or maintain it into Citizens Towers in Craven's Town itself because your Twitch and the Discord accounts are linked and integrated. And last, by no means least, not only my undying appreciation and gratitude, for for that but you're a prime citizen you could you could put that prime anywhere and you decided not for the first time to come and drop it right here and i love you for it very very much indeed liking the new legit emote uncanny right <laughs> and alex how are you doing right i know he, he kind of hates his shout out which is kind of what makes me keep it going but seriously he's fucking great stuff then you run away till the very next day but seriously you yes you do you like great retro games ninja turtles and marvel i've got to update the ninja turtles bit because you're all about the batman now then you need to see nielsen alex 92 an excellent fellow and streamer from sweden who's a great addition to twitch's splendid retro community throw him a follow and join the turtle squad there and not only is he a retro variety streamer and i believe recently or coming up you've got your retro's most wanted little charity event that a bunch of streamers i, I kind of think are pretty good are uh, doing doing it at the moment it's an ongoing thing but also um, he, he's a speedrunner as well he's absolutely crushing it at Batman on the NES so uh, yeah do go give the guy some love if retro is your jam he's an entertaining fellow an all-round good egg Okay, okay, back on with the stories. We're already getting all the love tonight. We're getting so much love tonight. That is really, really kind. Oh, stop making me blush. Never! You're blush taking. See what I did there? <laughs> I'm gonna go back to this salon story. Throws my underwear at Craven. Actually, this is the first time you haven't uh, you haven't actually asked in a while what colour underwear I've got on. That is usually your thing. So now I know what colour pants you've got, and they're love hearts and flowers. Alex, I had no idea. Okay, I'll tuck those away for later. They go in the pants drawer. Excellent. Marvellous. I have fresh pants in my pants drawer. I've been wearing these same ones for about two years. Need to go and get them scraped. <laughs> what colour do you have then? There Cabot it is. Pride. 
I'm actually Kappa Pride indeed. Oh, thank you, Ting. One tries, one tries. Well, if you feel that way and you feel like sticking around, I'm sure you'll fit in just fine. The uh, I'm actually wearing the shorts, the little sort of night shorts I sleep in. They have a, um, a, a navy blue elastic band and drawstring cords in case I get caught with my trousers down. Um, and they are a nice neutral grey. Um, doesn't hide any of the dirt, sweat or anything else. Mm, enjoy that mental image. You asked, you shall suffer. Okay, so I'm actually I'm gonna start from the story from the top again. Uh, teach me your ways, oh wise one. Just, just, just be nice and and network and try and and the nice people will come and be consistent. And any any toxic knobbers who come by and try and cause you trouble, don't feed them. If they seem all right, you're welcome. If they go too far, you get rid of them, and everything will be awesome, and everyone will have ice cream. That's how it always works forever. Legit underwear, always legit underwear, mate. Mm. This underwear is so freaking legit. Well, that's a good idea for some of my merch. I'm gonna have to make like a whole brand of like legit pants. Craven's Town's legit underwear. You know, you'll never need anything to snuggle your taint again. Um, right, I'm gonna start from the top again. So add up what everyone owes me, sure thing, boss. So this happened a few years ago, but I remember it at work today. I work at a spa slash salon at the front desk. The employees get a pretty good discount on services. So plenty of them get their nails or lashes and hair, etc., done regularly at the spa. The rule is pay when you're done with your service, like any other client. But some wiggle room was allowed in the case of payday is tomorrow, I'll pay as soon as the money goes through. Or if the front desk was busy helping clients, and they had to leave we know where they'll be it's tomorrow morning at nine um, we would put the services on hold and the employee would pay ASAP it mostly worked on the honor system of don't abuse it or we can't have nice things anymore kind of thing most employees were pretty good about it but of course there were the few that regularly forgot for days or weeks or I can't pay today I'll pay tomorrow and these few were usually the ones with the most seniority in year in years worked rather than power uh, one of these employees in particular was far worse than the others on the uh desi it's been a hot minute since i've seen your delightful self pop up in the chat although i don't doubt you've possibly been lurking around how have you been new emote coming up you better believe it but oh yeah shit we hit 900 people over the weekend i had a couple of offline follows so that's nice that was good thank you alex yeah i haven't even posted about that <laughs> bobby fat got busy in here tonight stop pushing all right well don't tell me don't tell me as you know there's chat rules just don't mention any view amounts or whatever it's um, seems to be good. Desi, how you doing? Desi, are you still streaming? Are you still streaming? Let's do a shout out for Desi Ronstrant, just in case. Just in case. Desi Ron. Tron, who's still rocking up the variety if I remember in they've been hanging in there I'm glad to hear it and I think believe mr. Bobby fat gun as well unless one of my lovely counselors is there is mr. Redweird or Lila or hollow one hanging in the background because obviously while I'm reading it'd be awesome if I can get one of my awesome mods or as we call them here as we call them here counselors because it is the theme of a town rocking because I'm gonna go now, but I'll be back. Uh, you got an Instagram? Uh, this is a chance to plug your stuff. I totally do. I generally am most active on my uh, Twitter and YouTube. I do have an Instagram. I post it regularly. There's my socials. Uh, Take the gaming goat. Thanks so much. If you need to head off today and you're not back but before I've finished um, my other days, my usual streaming days are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. I'll be back for Mellow Out Monday tomorrow, 7 p.m. UK time. Do uh, Fallout New Vegas blind 100% plus all DLC we just started the dead money DLC so if that's your jam awesome if you want to see more about what I do check the channel panels um, with the schedule below and I look forward to seeing you again do have a fantastic rest of your Sunday my dude um, haven't streamed in a long while but I hope to get back to it real soon well I hope you do I hope you too Desi and let me know when you do let me know when you do and we'll make sure we keep giving you love Hey, Resident Duncan of Florence. Oh, I'm not used to seeing you without a flag by your name, mate. Resident Duncan of Florence is in the house. Welcome, 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 welcome. Add a little bit more welcome. Bye, mate. Take care, take, take care, take care. Bye, 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 bye. All right, so on the compliance, uh, this is the compliance of paying up for this spa thing that I just described in the first part of the story. One day, the owner comes in to pick some things up and ask someone on the desk, what is it? 
what is that little button with 23 notifications on it? I stepped in and answered, that's the staff services that are on hold. Uh, we, have, we have less than 23 employees, which means that one or more employees owe for multiple services. The owner exploded. She started shouting that it's absolutely ridiculous this many people owed her money, and how could you have let it get this far, and who are the employees that owe? I started to reply, well, I started to reply. Oh, hang on, I scrolled too far. Da -da 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 -da. I start. Oh! <laughs> we got our second citizen, very much returning citizen. Darkens just gave a visa to Craven Sound citizenship to Duncan of Florence. Darkens, you are amazing! Duncan, welcome back. Oh, Desi, can I ask a favour? Yes, sorry. Um, I, I, by all means, by all means, Desi, go for it. Um, Duncan Florence, well, firstly, welcome back to the ranks of the citizenry. You are not just legit, you are once again Craven's Town legit. I knew you'd have been right all on top of that, but Darkens beat you to the niceness. You're going to have to be faster with your niceness or just not at all. Citizen Shadow Nation, good evening to you, mate. Well, what, what flag are you on at this point, Duncan? I can't remember if it's bronze or silver. Bronze or silver. It's, it's up to silver! It's jumped up to Our a silver! community grows. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Shadow. There's the, a Shadow a shadow Nation is never early nor late. He arrives exactly when he intends to. And thank you so much for the f uh, for becoming a resident Joey Fart King. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, I'll try my best to make sure I'm standing upwind of you, but thank Thanks so much for supporting the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. Darkens, you are not just legit. You're once again Craven Sound legit. Enjoy the use of the legit emotes, especially legit itself, all over Twitch in all the legit manners you can think of. Wave your all new now shiny silver flag. Is it new or have you had it a month already? I can't remember. Anyway, wave your shiny silver flag loud and proud every time you chat here. Whether or not I'm online, you will, of course, be able to enter the Citizens Giveaway. The first stream of every month is a perk for my subscribers, aka citizens, um, to enter the giveaway, provided you are here in good time when I draw it, which will probably usually be at 8pm on the first stream of the August, of August month. This is once a month. You will maintain your access to Citizens Towers in Craven's Town and all the perks therein, many of which you have provided to other people. And last, but by no means least, my undying appreciation and gratitude not only to you, but the boundless generosity of Citizen Dunk uh, Darkens, Darkens 10,000, for your 31st gifted visa. That is delightful. You'll wish for me. Okay, Desi, um, I'm because I have my phone as my second monitor, I tend to catch whispers after the show so I will check it out once I'm done here tonight but no worries at all mate if I can help you out I would do my darndest and who else is uh, uh, I'm back because your Instagram link is broken for mobile I thought he'd let you know but this time I'm really gone oh I'm sorry it's, it's broken for mobile that's weird oh flaps right I know why I know why it's because I've got it I've got it going to my old my old thing, it's not, I, I, I just, you just, Tig, you've just reminded me to, um, right, I need to update my socials then, I can't believe I forgot that, yeah, I've got it pointing to the, the wrong name, yeah, it's just, it's just Craven underscore, not Craven underscore Twitch anymore, so let me quickly fix that, and then the one on the timer as well, oh man, thank goodness Tig, Tig the Gaming Goat came by, and actually, uh, Oh man, I've been sending people the wrong way for like like a month to the wrong Instagram. I was thinking it had gotten a bit quiet on there, but there we go. All right, the socials. I'll I'll do I'll do um I'll do socials one more time. I'll do socials one more time. Right, and let me just check that that's now coming up correctly. Sorry about the so many pauses and breaks in this story. There we are. It's now just Craven underscore. That's the correct one. Um. Ah, okay, Desi. Um. Should tell you what you. Uh. What. Do do whisper it to me in that case. I'll put it here, but whisper it to me as well because I might be able if it's toward the raids at the end of the stream. At the end of the stream, I can wind things down. It's easier for me to check. Um, it's just like when I'm in mid flow, I usually can't catch whispers. But yeah, post it there in a the chat by all means, and uh, also um, whisper it. And if, if if it feels right, I'll check them out. But we got a we got a got a got a few a few people potentially competing. And Joey Farking, once again, thank you very much for becoming a resident. And a hi. Make sure I um, haven't missed anything. 
<laughs> you guys are all so generous. Yeah, Darkens is a bit of a legend. And Shadow Nation says, I was uh, watching Escape of the Night and um, over, uh, over and over. I'm so happy for season four. Nice one, nice one, nice one, nice one. And there's a duel kicking off. Darkens is victorious. Congratulations, Darkens. All right, God. So much activity today. It was, it, was, it was quite a quiet start. It's one of the quietest starts to a stream we've had, but it's really sort of like picked up and gotten a bit crazy. And I'm taking forever to read this story. Right, let's get. I'll get back to it and then I'll catch up on the chat. Okay, so story time and then chat time. Um. Yeah, so the owner exploded. She started shouting that it's absolutely ridiculous that this many people owed her money, and how could you have let it get this far, and who are the employees that owe? And the user started to reply, well, most of them are. She cuts me off and says, just add it up now and tell me so I can talk to them about taking it out of their paychecks. I started to open up the window to show the list of employees who owe for services and said, okay, just letting you know that the reason there are so many, and she cuts me off again and says, oh, you guys, front desk, I guess, always have an excuse and there is no excuse, just do it, and storms off to the staff room. My other desk co-worker, who'd been hiding in the bathroom, I can't blame her to be honest, comes out and asks, did she see the names on the list? I replied she did not, and got to work on my list, writing out the names of the employees next to their total owing for their services in order from most owed to least. About 30 minutes later, the boss comes down in all her holy terror and demands the list. I handed it to her, and after glancing at a moment, at it for a moment, she froze. <laughs> uh, Y'all, if you've never seen someone lose their steam in front of your very eyes, I highly recommend it, and so do I personally, it's rather funny. At the top of my list is this owner's adult daughter's name, who happens to be an employee, and consequently owes the spa nearly $400 in services after her 50% discount for big staff, and not including tax. She had gone back to school recently and was only working part-time, so I guess she was short on money and regularly snuck out without paying for her lashes and her nails. Back to the shell-shocked boss. After staring at the list for a moment in silence, she went over to the computer, opened up the list of on-hold services and scrolls through. 90% of the services on hold are her daughters. After a few more minutes of staring at the list, she finally looks up and says, I'm her mother and the owner, so I'm going to pay this. However, I want all the receipts uh, all the receipts to be given to her and she is not to get any services unless she prepays. I'll tell her this myself, make sure the rest of the on holds are paid by the end of the employee's next shifts. I cashed her daughter's services out, bundled the receipts, gave them to my boss, she thanked me and left. I am simultaneously sad and relieved that I wasn't present for the verbal ass whooping her daughter received. Well, at least the boss didn't sort of try and find some excuse and treat her daughter like some precious thing, but yeah, I love the idea of someone's like, and then like, as they completely run out of energy. Oh my word. Oh, we had a hunt. I'm sorry, I missed it. Did we? Did it? Was it, we just kicked a, a plated, a plated dust viper's ass? And Joey Graceffa said, "I'm behind the scenes for Escape the Night Season Four. Well, bitch, this is my fucking show, so of course I'm a damn all star. <laughs> I don't know Escape the Night, but that's um, very, very interesting. Um. My friends are doing a retro charity event benefiting the Trevor Project, which is, yeah, obviously, yeah, no, no worries, Desi. The, Pre the Trevor Project's well known here because it was the same charity that was uh, Pride Month, all of Pride Month across, across t uh, Twitch um, supported. And by the by the way, Desi, is this um is this Retro's Most Wanted? Because I'm already aware of that because I'm friends with everyone in it pretty much uh, and I know it's going on at the moment. Um, I know everyone here is fantastic. I don't know if anyone's interested in joining the community. Is this, so? Is, is this, um... Retro's Most Wanted or uh, Retro Block Party, um, because obviously both of those groups we, we are known. And uh, but yeah, big big time supporters of the Trevor Project. But I'll have to see who is online and 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 who is doing what. It's funny you should watch it. Okay, I'll try and make a mental note of that one. Or um, uh, Shadow Nation, if you want to suggest it and have a, a link to a like a link to the trailer of the show or something, put it in the Cray Flicks Lounge, which is our our part of town for um, all things related to TV and film. If you go into the entertainment district and you see Cray Flicks lounge little craven play on words of netflix there and post a little trailer for it that way i'll remember and other people can maybe get a chance to check it out as well that'd be really awesome 
All right. Moving on to oh, edit. Love it. I I, I don't work here, lady. So. Uh, this is a, a subreddit, of, uh, a derivative of a subreddit, it's like Tales from Retail, it involves stories about folks that go into other businesses and have irate customers mistake them for employees. And this was very kindly from... Uh, da, 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 da. I think this is from Darkens, yeah, as was the last one, Malicious Compliance, so from Darkens as well. This is my house and I'm not your boss. Apparently so. Posted by user Strawberry Pops 19 hours ago. It's already got 2.6 thousand upvotes. Let's see. Oh, this is a new one that started up. Yeah, do you mean Retro Rainbow? Okay, with with a double underscore. All right, I'll I'll bear it in mind. I'll take a little look, and if it feels right, like the right thing to follow um, Pillars of Eternity two with, then yeah, go for it. But I'll, I can't make any promises just yet. I see Jinta right before I start this story because I love Jinta's legend. Citizen Jinta, how you doing? Legend has it, Craven earned their creative skills and the alien abduction went horribly wrong. He escaped from the possession pod during the advanced uh, brainwashing phase and blew up the mothership by making a phone call during takeoff, thus saving the world and gaining an amazing gaming ability. True story, true story. Jinta's actually my official biographer at this point because he's, he knows all of the legendary stories before I evolved into the Twitch streamer you see before you today. So from user Strawberry Pop, this is my house and I'm not your boss, posted in r slash I don't work here lady. So this actually happened a long time ago now. But it still amuses me when I remember it, so I thought you guys might like it too. I hope it fits the sub, okay. So it's the late 90s, and I'm about 12, living at home with my mum, who was a manager of a department of the local hospital at the time. It was before email or texting, and caller ID wasn't much of a thing either. I remember those days. I'm, by Twitch standards, I'm a very old man. Um, my mum wanted to be a good boss and so let her staff call at her at home if there was an emergency. Naturally, her definition of an emergency and theirs did not match up. So my older sister and I were home one evening when the phone rang. Sis was in another room, so I grabbed it and it was a it was a Karen. <laughs> I feel so bad for like all the nice Karens in the world that the phrase a Karen has come to mean these people who want to see your manager or don't vaccinate their kids. Uh, a Karen Karen from my mum's team. The following mess of a conversation happened. Karen, can I speak to your mum? Me. Sorry, she's not home. Can I take a message? Mum had practically coached me to say this every time I took a call for her. Karen, I wanted to ask her for Saturday off. This is about three or four days away, so super late notice by hospital standards. Uh, me. Okay, I'll pass the message on. Karen, so can I have Saturday off? Me. I don't know. Karen, well, can't you check? Me. Me. No. Karen, I don't know why it's so hard. Just look at your mum's diary and tell me if I can take the day off. Karen, uh, me. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Mum has a diary with her anyway. Karen, I don't know why you're being so difficult. Me, I'm sorry, you really need to speak to my mum. Karen, why can't you help? Me, I'm 12. I have no idea if you can take the day off. Karen, well, when is your mother getting home? Me, I'm not sure. Later tonight, but she didn't say a time. Karen, huge sigh. Just tell me if I can take Saturday off. Me, I'm sorry, I- Karen, you're useless. I'll just talk to your m mother tomorrow instead since you won't help me. And she hung up. What the hell? I was mortified since I thought I'd fucked up, but my mum hit the roof when I told her and she stopped the entire team from calling the home number again. Also, it turned out that Karen had only wanted Saturday off so she and her all her middle-aged friends could go drinking Friday night and she didn't fancy getting up for work the next day. Tia, and yeah, the short version is Karen wanted a day off work, struggles to understand that a kid isn't actually in charge at a home phone number. Wow, what a massive bitch. <laughs> Jinta, how everyone? How's the Craven Day? The Craven Day is going okay. Jinta, how are you doing? Hey, how are things ticking over with work, my dude? Are you, are you feeling a little bit better? Is that, that worst period, that real super hectic period still a uh, thing? Or are you still like keeping a weather eye around for potential other opportunities? I hope things are going better for you, mate. Um, all right. The mar oh, so yeah, the, the marathon's going to about 11 p.m. Eastern Stand. Oh, no, then I might still be on. Uh, uh, are there nice Karens? There is. My, my god daughter 
Peter's uh, mother is Karen, and she's lovely. Also, Gold Goldberg's other half, um, Goldberg, my streamer and one of my a streamer, and one of my best friends of many many years, um, is is his wife, and she's very she's a nice Karen. So there's of course there are there are nice Karens. Um, where, where do I put Escape the Night in the Cray Flicks Lounge? Let me just type that in for you there. Uh, Shadow Nation. You should find a part of town that is our movie and TV uh, part of town. If you find that, it's in the entertainment um, district. So if you scroll down the various districts, you see entertainment districts, you find a channel called Crayflix Lounge. And for future reference, that's for all things. Um, if you have trailers from YouTube, if you want to talk movies and TV um, and, and all that stuff, and you want to share off and show off like suggestions that you think the rest of the community might enjoy and watch, that's the place to do it. Um, we have enough people in place now it's calming down. Arjinta, oh, that's a huge relief. That's really good, mate. Well, I hope I hope then hanging on in there and putting yourself through that grueling several months that you've been doing pays off and uh, your superiors and folks do recognise the hard work you put in because you've been burning it at both ends for a bloody long time. Oh, and now we've got oh we got we've got some pro revenge. Another one from Darkens Ten Thousand. Love a bit of pro revenge. Love a bit of pro revenge. This is from user Kveldsen, posted twenty three hours ago. Did it nearly twenty thousand upvotes already, which is mental. Evil stepfather gets what he deserves. And in pro revenge is do you have a story uh, of you or someone you know getting back at someone with pro revenge after being wrong? Post it here. So an an evil stepfather. Well, so that's a nice little modern change up from the evil stepmother. Uh, vibe. Actually, to be fair, evil stepfathers have appeared in, in sort of Dickens novels as well, so I guess it's not so new. Okay. So here we go. When I was 15, my mum started dating a man she met on a dating website. I didn't like him the first time I met him, and two months later he moved into the house. Jesus Christ, two months, he's, two months he's already moved in. About three weeks after he moved in, he took my skateboards, self-built halfpipe, ramps, BMX bike, ice hockey gear, and many other things to the dump one day while I was at school. He said he did, not, he did this because he didn't want all my crap cluttering up his garage. Oh my God. All right, this guy's already a shit. Maybe two months later after that, he punched me in the stomach for the first time because I got up from the dinner table without asking to be excused. From there, it escalated into full-fledged beatdowns for the smallest perceived slight to his authority. <sighs> okay, this guy's a bad news. One day, he decided to take my extensive Pokemon card collection, even more extensive comic book collection, my Game Boy and PS2 with all the assorted games, and my fantasy and sci-fi book collection, and got rid of it, rid of it all because 15-year-old boys should be playing football and baseball, not being a faggot, sorry, but that's what it says, a faggot nerd playing with Pokemon cards and reading comics and books. All right, so this guy is an absolute shit probably like a total wanker and a bully when he was at school. I would like, oh, I would like to add that he was a middle school teacher and then his off time refereed and umpired local middle and high school sports games. My mum never intervened and in fact acquiesced when he demanded that she stop giving me lunch money because the little shit will just spend it on comics and other gay shit. Jesus. One day I took maybe three dollars and change out of his change jar, jar so I could buy a slice of pizza and some fruit during a fruit punch during lunch at school because I was tired of being hungry. He couldn't even buy lunch at school. My twin sister was always a bit of an asshole and frequently blackmailed me into doing her chores from a, long, a young age. I was fed up and refused to do something so she told him what I had done. The man actually called the police and pressed larceny charges against me and once the police left beat me senseless. At that point, oh, hang on, let me just click on the click thing there, let's see. At that point, I ran away. When the cops found me and returned me to my home, I found out that he... Uh, he'd been trying to talk my mum into sending me away to military school or something of that nature. I ran away again, and between having run away several times and the larceny charge, ended up turning 16 in juvenile detention. 
I spent the next couple of years miserable and afraid, frequently contemplating suicide. I, once I left home, I didn't speak to my mum for several years. We eventually reconciled, and by that point, they had married. I was a lot bigger than I had been as a young teenager and had gotten into weightlifting, so he no longer acted like he was going to punch me to make me flinch, much less actually hit me, and we basically avoided each other for the most part. My mum found out that she had stage 4 cancer and no longer wanted to waste any of the time she had left with him, so she had a lawyer draft up a separation agreement whereby he would receive a set amount of money upon separation and would have 45 days to retrieve his belongings from the house. He had spent his entire inheritance in six months, uh, then had to sell his mother's house that he grew up in in order to settle his debts shortly before they'd started dating. Oh, and my mother bought the house back from the bank before they married. She allowed him to keep the house and and he moved back into his mother's house. Okay. My mother passed away about nine months after their separation and despite the agreement have having been having been having been allowing him to come and get his stuff piecemeal i put in a me um oh and despite the agreement having oh god sorry this person that is written his grammar is really bad um have been allowing him to come and get his stuff piecemeal i put an immediate end to that he was past the deadline to remove his personal effects and they were now legally mine to dispose of as i saw fit hee <laughs> sweet revenge i sold his baseball card collection around fourteen thousand dollars worth and his autographed sports memorabilia, roughly $11,000, and sold all of his woodworking equipment along with several pieces of furniture that he had made, $6,500 I, I think. I kept his mother's engagement ring, platinum band, three diamonds, roughly two characters, wedding, ba wedding band, his coin collection, because I, I also collect coins, and some other tools and other odds and ends. Now comes the real fun. So he's gotten his revenge for all the stuff that was stolen and the abuse he got as a kid and all the stuff of his that was chucked out when he was young. Around a month ago, I finally saw him at the grocery store. As he was leaving, I approached him. I told him I had sold his collections as he was pushing a car out towards his car. He reacted exactly as I expected. He took a swing at me multiple times. I already had my phone ready to dial 911. Several of these punches missed, and the ones that did connect didn't have much effect because he's nowhere near as strong as he was 20 years ago in his 40s, and I no longer a skinny little 15 year old kid. He continued to try and punch me as I spoke to the 911 operator and was effectively ramming his grocery cart into my new Toyota as the police officers pulled into the parking lot. He was arrested for assault, communicating threats, and destruction of property. As a result, he lost his job and pension at the local middle school, and because he had never learned how to save money while married uh, to my somewhat wealthy mother, ended up having to sell his mother's house because he hired an expensive law lawyer thinking he could somehow beat the charges. My nephew, who was on the football team, <coughs> excuse me, made it well known to his friends that not only had uh, that he had not only just been arrested and convicted of assault as well as other charges but he had he had also beat me as a child causing several parents to call for him to resign from refereeing and umpiring for local sports games my niece and my girlfriend's much younger sister are enrolled at the middle school where he worked and say that he was not only universally disliked but when he came up to the school to get his belongings he made a big scene and ended up hysterically crying as he was leaving at least that's what they've heard from kids who were attending summer school at the time. His son, who he was equally abusive towards as a child, refused to take him in or help him out, so the abusive stepfather ended up having to take a job as a cashier in Walmart so that he could afford the rent on his crappy little trailer in an absolutely awful neighbourhood. Even though that Walmart is not the closest Walmart to my house, that is now the only place where I go grocery shopping or to purchase anything that I need. I purposely stand in line longer than I need to just so that he can be the one who has the pleasure of ringing up my purchases. The first time I went through his line, he attempted to ring up multiple items more than one time to overcharge me, and when I called him on it, he said that I was mistaken. I asked for a manager, and the manager believed him that time that it was an accident, but he learned that he can't get away with that. The second
second time I made sure to be as nice as possible and I had to ask for a manager because he was overwhelmingly rude. The people in line behind me backed me up and he got into some trouble for that. Every time I go in there and step into line, I see him die a little bit inside and it gives me such satisfaction. Sometimes I'll say that I'm paying with exact change and as I'm about to hand him the money, I'll say, oh, I didn't realize I had rare coin from his collection in my pocket. I guess I'll use my credit card. <laughs> I just sold his expensive ratcheting wrench set and so on Monday when he goes, he works again, I'm going to buy my daughter one of their better above ground pools and as he's ringing it out, tell him, I know that daughter is just going to love this pool. It's not like I would ever use those expensive ratcheting tools anyway. <sighs> Jesus, that's some revenge and then some. Holy crap, right? Let me, sorry for it. Let me just catch up, catch up with the chat. You've all been like saying nice things. God, what an asshole. He got some jesters desserts there absolutely got some and a tuxedo mask i'm sorry i missed you already i was mid flow through welcome in a tuxedo mask welcome 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 i hope you didn't think like oh god this guy doesn't even doesn't even uh, acknowledge anybody welcome thanks so much for popping up in the chat how can this guy get away with this it happens a lot poor poor kids ah naomi's on it naomi's on it thank you so much for giving him welcome to tuxedo mask and welcome on in tuxedo mask nice what a jerk he got what he deserved absolutely that's great karma kicks hard into the balls absolutely it says, legend has it, Craven once battled ten angry ninjas for the right to call himself King of the Night. He failed at the last step. I still bear the shame to this day. Uh, losing when he was pinged in the back of the head with a bean bun was only allowed to call himself Jester of the Evening between 3 and 5 p.m. Very true. Very true. I, I have the mask and everything. It's why the Jester in Darkest Dungeon to my day, this day is one of my favourite thematic characters. Dextro! Citizen Dextro! Citizen Dextro! Darkens crushing it. Darkens crushing it in the um in, in the the thing. Oh, Jinta started a hunt as well. We have a hunt on the go. Let's get involved. If you're wondering what hunts and jewels are, folks, they're all related to our awesome channel currency, our point system, which is creds. If you want to learn more about it, exclamation mark creds in the chat. Just with a K, because it's Craven. Craven. So K-R-E-D-S. If you want to see how to spell it to be sure, check the stream title, exclamation mark creds. There you go. There you go, there you go, there you go. A Dex, we must get a shout out for the delight for Dextro Anarchy. Here we are. Righty ho. Dextra Anarchy, she is lovely. I was last doing some Cuphead. Oh, good to see that back on the roster. Yeah, is um, plays a variety of retro games. Does um, especially like strong 60-bit uh, and SNES era or that style of modern games, but inspired like that of um, JRPGs and things. Is also the absolute mistress of Cuphead on Twitch. She's amazing at it, and that makes its way back into her roster. Do go and check check her out sometime. Right, hopefully, I hope we got enough there for a good hunt. Will we be a Stone Crusher Phoenix? Hey, no worries, no worries, my lovely. Always happy to do it, always happy to do it. Okay, there was a, that was another story. And to finish us off for part one, to finish us off for the Craven Reads community submissions, we've got a couple of poems. These were actually put in uh, last week by Citizen Effects. Um, I did one of them last week, gonna do the next couple uh, this week. Stone Crusher Phoenix. Oh, we actually beat a Stone Crusher Phoenix. Craven, I see the new emote, Shadow Nation. Yes, I hope you like it, man. It got approved just um just last uh, Thursday. Yeah, I think I got it got approved 15 minutes before I went live on the on the same stream that it, it got it for. So yeah, that's we use that um, Shadow. If you're worrying, if you're wondering, um, if we get new people popping up in the chat and becoming residents, where well, we hit welcome and uh, we keep legit more for new citizens for hit that legit and when we raid people. And if we receive a raid, if it comes in and the raid alert goes off, we can do legit welcome, legit welcome. So so the legit emote by itself is no longer doing all the heavy lifting. I've got to draw up the remaining three and they will be coming because I'm nearly done finally with this huge declutter. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you survived the hunt. Well done, Darkens. Legit pride. Okay, so this poem is by Tom Gunn uh, from the Poetry uh, is in the Poetry Foundation. It's called Duncan. When in his twenties a poetry's full strength burst into voice as an unstoppable flood, he let the divine prompting come at length, rushingly bear him any way it would, and went on writing while the ferry turned from San Francisco back to Berkeley too, and back again and back again he learned. You add to, you don't cancel what you do. Between the notebook margins his pen travelled, his own lines carrying him in a new mode to ports in which past purposes unravelled, so that, 
as on the ferry line he rode. Whatever his first plans had been that night had been, the energy that rose from their confusion became the changing passage lived within while the pen wrote and looked beyond conclusion. Forty years later, and both kidneys gone, every eight hours home dialysis, the habit of his restlessness stayed on, exhausting him with his responsiveness. After circulations of one day in which he taught a three-hour seminar, he gave a reading clear across the bay, and while returning from it to the car. With plunging, hovering, tread tired and unsteady, down wheeler steps, he faltered and fell. Fell, he said later, as if I stood ready, in the strong arms of Tom Gunn. Well, well. The image comic, as I might have known, and generous, but it turned things round to myth. He fell across the white steps there alone, though it was me indeed that he was with. I hadn't caught him, hadn't seen in time, and picked him up where he had softly dropped. A pillow full of feathers, was it a rhyme? He later sought in which he might adopt. The role of HD, broken hipped and old, who, as she moved off from the reading stand, had stumbled on the platform but was held and steadied by another poet's hand. He was now a posthumous poet. I have said, for since his illness he had not composed, in sight of a conclusion, whose great dread was closure, his life soon to be enclosed. Like the sparrow's flight above the feasting friends, briefly revealed where its breast caught their light. Beneath the long roof, between open ends, then set themselves the margins of unchanging night. And that is from Tom Gunn Duncan, written in 2000 by Tom Gunn. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it's right. I'm in the middle of writing an assignment for a pretty cool job. I'm having a bad case of imposter syndrome hitting me hard uh, as, as, as part of the job application. Well, the, all the best people, Dex, all the best people get imposter syndrome, um, and you certainly don't have it. Uh, what what is the kind of what is the uh, kind of job that you're going for? Is it related to what you do now with um, teaching English and and that kind of stuff, or is it more of a departure from that? Random fact: all that Jinter's Jinter's two things. Things are legends of people uh, which he concocts himself and random facts which he looks up from all over the internet and they're delightful random fact diego the tortoise fathered over 800 children while we spend millions trying to save a monochrome bear that is too stupid to meet, meet reproduce without the help of a hundred year old geriatric all natural viagra pumped sexual tyrannus uh, with uh, 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 that's too stupid to reproduce without help this 100 year old geriatric all natural viagra pumped sexual tyrannosaurus was dropped off on an island with 42 females and almost single-handedly pulled his species back from extinction. His children are collected and transported to other islands to support the genetic diversity. What a beast, Diego the tortoise. I'm surprised he wasn't called Ron Jeremy the tortoise with sexual proclivities like that. Man, that's awesome. Oh, Duncan wants to duel. Duncan wants to duel. You want to take on the mayor? You want to take on the mayor? Oh, bring it, mate. Bring it. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Bio enhancements, enduring adrenaline, and plumbing red hot. Darkens is three for three. I hit the deck. Thoroughly bested by Darkens ten thousand. Jeez Louise, what the hell has happened to my background music? Thank you very much. Pause. Freaking continue watching. It's going on in the back. Absolutely in the background. Right, we've got one more thing for you guys. For part one tonight. Um, another poem. The second poem submitted by um, submitted by Effects, and this is called. Let me see. This is called Body Without the D. So it's a bit of a play on words with a uh, boy. The boy wakes up, the boy looks at itself, the boy notices something missing. There is both too much and not enough flesh on the boy. The boy is covered in hair. What a hairy boy. Some makes it look more like a boy. Some makes it look more like a monster. The boy did not learn how to shave to look, the boy did not learn to shave from its father, so it taught itself how to graze its skin and cut things off. The boy cuts itself by accident. The blood reminds the boy that it is a boy. Reminds the boy how a boy bleeds. Reminds the boy that not every boy bleeds. The boy talks to a girl about bleeding. She explains how this boy works. This boy is different from hers. Boy has too much and not enough flesh to be her. The biology of a boy is just 
boy will only ever be a boy. The boy is black, so the boy is and will only ever be a boy. The boy couldn't be a man if it tried. The boy tried. The boy feels empty. The boy feels like it will only ever be empty. The boy feels that it will never hold the weight of another boy inside of it. And no matter how many D's fit inside the boy. The boy is a hollow facade. It attempts a convincing veneer. Boy dresses. What hips on the boy? Boy paints its face. What lips on the boy? Boy adorns itself with labels written for lovelier frames. What a beautiful boy. Still a boy. But a fierce boy now, a royal boy now, a boy worthy of being called queen. What a dazzling ruse to turn a boy into a lie everyone loves to look at. The boy looks at itself. The boy sees all the gawking at its gloss. The boy hears all the masses asking for its missing. The boy offers all of its letters. B for the birth. O for the operation. Y for the lack left in its genes. What this boy would abandon for the risk of being real. The boy is real, enough and too much, existing as its own erasure. What an elusive D, evading removal, avoiding recognition, leaving just a boy. Thus is never lost, but can't be found. That was really good. Effects, citizen effects, thank you so much. Every time you hear the thread of word boy there, it's actually B O apostrophe Y. So it's a play on words with boy and b body. That's uh, um, that was really really powerful touch on um, the, uh, the the whole process of uh, transgenderism um, for a black transgender boy. I like that one. That was really good. That was really really good. Dex, can I post a link? The jobs at an independent news outlet called the Correspondent. I'll be applying for English copy editor. Yeah, Dex, by all means, by all means. Those kinds of links are a okay in the chat and likewise in Town Square. And uh, it's good luck on yes, yes, and nurse. Uh, both of you, Naomi and Dex, as always, the very best of luck. And you're both two extremely talented ladies, and you're absolutely going to crush it. You've got all the skills in the world in your respective fields, and I'm hoping everything comes up A plus for you. Yeah, that was a great poem. Jinta whispers, Cravenstown will no longer serve Oreos in the library after the great Knights Templar, <laughs> the Knights Templar Temple Night debacle of 12th of March 1912. Sub note, Cravenstown residents are forbidden from speaking of the great Knights Templar Temple Night debacle yes we must maintain that awesome well even every single time every single time you lovely lovely townspeople outdo yourselves in awesome submissions i'm loving the variety coming in darkens thank you so much for as always picking the best pro revenge malicious compliance i don't work here lady and, and the good old reliable reddit content duncan for scouring like the really interesting bits and pieces from the world of nature and uh, today i learned an interesting factoids i hope you didn't mind me indulging myself by bringing in a little bit of the astronomy and science on the two colliding black holes and a thank you very much to citizen effects for bringing in um some really really nice and powerful poems both yesterday and uh but last week and today as well that boy one especially good don't go anywhere folks although right now is a perfect opportunity to go and get yourself a little drink stay hydrated a cup of tea go for a wee i'm literally going to update the category because part one is done and part two is for me and you it's going to be pillars of eternity two and we're leaving nekataka we're back on the ocean so i've had just about enough of the city i've had just about enough we've been there a long while so we've got a shitload of cool stuff coming